So good evening, and once again, thank you for joining us this year here in Minneapolis. If you have not yet had the chance to walk across the Stone Arch Bridge at night, uh, straddle the Mississippi River and look at the neon lights, I highly encourage that you do that uh, this evening before you leave. Um, in particular, the view of the glowing gold medal flower bridge, I mean, uh, sign atop of the grain elevator is worth your time. And it should be obvious, but that was the inspiration for this year's uh, conference logo. And I do want to thank our Vice President, Brooke Marston, for the inspiration for that particular idea. Now, to remind everyone, our annual meeting uh, occurred on the traditional land of the Dakota people and the ancestral and contemporary homeland. It is the ancestral and contemporary homeland of many indigenous peoples. The Board of Directors has pledged the Society's support for the return and control of indigenous homelands with an annual donation to the Indian Land Tenure Foundation, which is located here in Minneapolis, St. Paul. I also want to extend my thanks uh, this year to Kate Carlson and the University of Minnesota for the opportunity to stream their Indigenous Mapping Symposium uh, for our attendees here this morning. So thank you. Are the captions working well? Okay. So the end of our conference is always a bittersweet time uh, and it's one of mixed emotions for me personally, because I typically find myself in uh, the doldrums from conference fatigue and uh, also from a, an odd sense of homesickness. Um, and it's also tinged by sadness of knowing that I didn't visit with enough of you as much as I wanted to, and then I also won't have an opportunity to visit with you uh, for another year. Um, and so, uh, it's tinged with sadness, but it's, uh, all of that is surpassed by the joy and the rejuvenation that three days of wall-to-wall -wall or projector-to-projector -projector maps uh, uh, provides me. Um, your maps, your talents, your creativity, um, your creative and professional and academic pursuits, uh, everything that you all bring to the, our annual conference um, it helps me to return home feeling ready for just something, like I just feel ready. And uh, each year I, I return home with a journal. It's scribbled full of uh, ideas, inspiration, questions, and, and very often I, I don't do anything with the majority of what I write down, but I still like to go back and just in a sense reminisce about all of the amazing things that I've seen. And then sometimes I actually do jot down a note that I use right away. And I, I mean, like just one thing uh, this year, uh, I have, uh, as an example, is it's, I'm someone who habitually categorizes everything. And so uh, thanks to Aubrey Kinghorn's legend classification, I'm going to go home. I already have some thoughts of how I want to tweak the color guide uh, scheme guide that I've been working on for years. Um, so it's things like that. They can be full presentations or they can be small ideas, but I'm so thankful for that opportunity and to translate your ideas or, and allow them to allow your ideas to transform my work. Um, and uh, I say that these could be relatively small things, but they have a big impact on my own cartographic output, my own love of map making. And, um, and I enjoy that every year I get to carry this home. So uh, I, I wanna thank all of you. And uh, I wanna thank you all for attending this year's conference. Um, I want to thank you all for participating in the NASIS community. And I wanna thank you all for inspiring your fellow NASIS attendees. Um, you remember as you look around the table, and when you look around the room, um, that it is filled with people that are inspired. Uh, everyone is inspired by the same folks you are. We're inspired by the same maps you are, and that you yourself uh, are a source of cartographic inspiration. So thank you all, and give yourselves a round of applause. You deserve it.
And on the subject of thank yous, uh, I have to call out the many, many folks who contributed to the success of this year's meeting and also to the ongoing year-long success of NASUS. Um, your hands may get a little bit of tired from clapping, but I think it is absolutely important that we properly acknowledge uh, each one of these uh, people. And I also want to give the caveat, I apologize. There are so many people that contribute to NASIS. If I do not say your name, please don't take that as a slight or an insult. I'm just overwhelmed by the number of people who do contribute to our society success. So first, will the executive officers please stand up? Susan Peschel, Martha Bostwick, Hans Vandermeer, Neil Allen, Nick Martinelli, Hannah Dormito, and Jenny Mason. <laughs> Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> and thank you. And now I'll ask our current board of directors to stand up, including our new uh, directors, uh, Vicki Johnson Dahl, Chelsea Nestle, Kate LaRue, Rebecca Ramsey, Bill Impasathian, and Alex Fries. Just so you are all aware, Alex is taking Hannah's vacant board seat since she moved into the vice president electancy. Um, and uh, Alex uh, earned this seat based on the share of votes he received in yesterday's runoff election. Um, I would also like you all to give a round of applause for student board member LaToya Gray Sparks and director at large Sarah Bell, who cannot be here tonight. A good round of applause for our cartographic perspectives team, editorial directors Amy Griffin and Jim Thatcher, Mark Daniel, Jake Coolidge, and Daniel Huffman, and there are many others. And our Atlas of Design team, Josh Ryan, Aaron Kolker, Tracy Teen, and managing editor, editor Nat Case. Um, and now our outgoing officers and board members. Um, and these folks have contributed so, so much over the past years. Oh, pardon me. And I know it's unfair to reduce folks to just one or two of their functions, but I don't have time to list everything that these individuals have done for NASIS. Uh, so first, uh, Mary Beth Kuna, our former treasurer. <laughs> Vanessa uh, Kanapke Wessel and Denise Liu, who are former directors at large. And they built up our diversity equity and inclusion committee into an important voice for our society. Thank you. Um, Elaine Guadero, who has done everything from designing our post-conference survey to taking meeting notes uh, to redesigning and editing our kick-ass print program. And then we have a whole lot of conference volunteers. Uh, PCD, Katie Perry, Katy Perry and Lou Janart. All right. Uh, Jenny Marie Johnson, who was a fixture at the registration desk this week. Amy Rock, who put together a lovely map gallery with help from Rebecca Ramsey. Uh, Dennis McClendon, who will entertain us shortly with Jeopardy with an assist from Joanna Merson. Carl Sack, who organized our fun run and walk. Um, Molly O'Halloran and Vicki Johnson Dahl, who helped organize Lunch Bunch. Our new attendee ambassadors, Josh Ryan, and once again, Vicki Johnson Dahl. <laughs> 
Bill and Pasathian for supporting the conference Slack channels. Yeah. Alex McPhee, who made the map for the print program. Josh Powell, our keynote speaker. And again, the many, many folks who volunteer, uh, particularly for our board committees. A lot of them may be nameless or faceless, faceless to the general membership, but they contribute so much just to the ongoing uh, work the board does. Um, in particular, I want to thank Daniel Huffman, Nat Case, Julie Whitmer, and everyone who contributes to our DEI committee. So, uh, you know, thanks to all of you, but there are many, many more volunteer opportunities. And if you want to participate more in NASIS, there are countless opportunities available to you. Um, so thank you all who were willing to run for the board and who sacrificed their time to the society and to our annual meeting. And we hope that you are willing to contribute and volunteer that time again. Um, again, NASIS is so much more than our annual meeting, so I encourage you all to reach out if there is a way that you would like to contribute. It doesn't have to be a way that we say we need help. If you have an idea, please share it with us. Um, if, uh, here are just a few ways. I mean, you can obviously run for the board. You can help and volunteer with a specific committee. You can help solicit maps uh, for our map gallery. You can sit in on our board meetings. You can sit in on our committee meetings. You can ask questions, contribute. You can make your voice heard, and I encourage you all to do so. Um, I also want to mention uh, that we have heard from so many folks who are disappointed that they are unable to participate virtually. Now, I've already mentioned this once, but uh, it's something that we are taking seriously. And so Hannah Domito, Vicki Johnson Dahl, and I will be announcing details very soon um, about Slack watch parties for presentations that were recorded this week. Now, we do not view this as a substitute uh, for our annual conference or as a substitute for live streaming or a decision not to live stream. Uh, but rather, we look at it as an opportunity, this particular uh, uh, opportunity for NASIS folks to gather more consistently throughout the year outside of the conference and keep our uh, community a vibrant community. Um, I also appreciate Daniel Huffman for his uh, helpful suggestions to get this off the ground and we will be soliciting your opinions and your suggestions as well in the coming weeks. Um, I encourage everyone to admire, uh, to spend a little bit of time admiring our two map quilts that are rolled up over in the corner. I think we should spread them out again. Um, uh, these things are, they're, they're just works of beauty and, and they really do show the, uh, just kind of the volunteer nature of NASUS. Um, Matthew Hampton started this project in 2012 uh, for a meeting in Portland, Oregon. And then David Lambert has been stitching these map quilts together uh, since 2013. Um, so one of the quilts, the new quilt this year is of Minneapolis, and it's Minneapolis expressed through the eyes of some of our cartographers here. Uh, Mike Foster, Ross Thorne, Nat Case, Neil Allen, Taylor Monroe, Rebecca Ramsey, Nick Lally, Brad Davidson, and Sarah Bell. And I would appreciate if you give them a round of applause for their beautiful work. And the second quilt, and one that's just fascinating to see, it's uh, the quilt of all of the NASIS map quilts. So going back to 2012, uh, there are over 80 NASIS members represented, uh, represented in that single map, uh, quilt. And it features a truly like, grin-inducing variety of, of cartographic uh, artistic styles and techniques. Um, so I don't think they deserve to be rolled up in the corner over there. I think we should spread them out and admire them this evening. And uh, if that wasn't enough, Dave also organizes our new GeoScavenge tradition, which gives us all a much needed push out of doors to explore our host city. So please give a hand to Dave for all of the work he does for the map quilt and for GeoScavenge. 
And then I have the distinct pleasure of announcing the winner of the GeoScavenge challenge. Perhaps I do. I made so many slides that are just copies of the same slide. So here we go. <laughs> it just came right up. <laughs> Chris Mixon, you won our 2022 GeoScavenge Challenge. Um, Dave has your prize. He's right up here in the front. Now, he's not the only winner. If you participated in GeoScavenge, you too are a winner. So if you participated in GeoScavenge, see Dave, Lam uh, see Dave Lambert for a lesser prize. <laughs> and now we have uh, the winners of our student map competitions. And also, I do, even though she was already announced, I want to start by announcing the uh, awardee for the 2022 NASIS Undergraduate Student Scholarship in Cartography. Um, and that is Lucy Roberts of the University of Oregon. <laughs> Lucy is a spatial data science major at the University of Oregon's Clark Honors College. She is an employer of the UO Infographics Lab where she helps perform geospatial data analysis and creates visualizations for a myriad of research partners. She is interested in the ways the GIS can be used to promote equity and was named an Oxford University Human Rights Fellow in 2022. Quite impressive. Congratulations. And now we have the winners for the four awards for the student map design competitions. I did not know where that was coming from. I thought it was the AC. <laughs> okay, so the student map and poster competition for cartographic design is Peter Atwood for his map Shipwrecks of Nova Scotia. Somebody has his, no? No, does somebody have the certificates at least? So I know, oh, you've got them over there. I didn't even, I'm so sorry, Amy. <laughs> All right, so Peter's not here, so we can get right to our second awardee. And that is the winner of the student map and poster competition for research is Jake Steinberg from the University of Wisconsin-Madison for his map Slivers of an Ancient Forest. Jake, you can come on up for your, your loot. Let's just applaud him as he walks up again. <laughs> All right. And now we have the awards for the uh, dynamic map competitions. Uh, the first is a student, uh, the winner for the individual student dynamic map. And that is Kenny Stansel from the University of Kentucky for the map Global COVID-19 Vaccine Apartheid. Congratulations. And then our next and final winner, and I'm sorry, not winner, winners, plural, for the group award of the student dynamic map competition, we have Eileen Clark, Austin Novak, and Drake Steinberg from the University of Wisconsin, Madison, and their lovely map. Digital Sky Sanctuaries. <laughs> and right now is a good time to take a pause if you want to get a, a drink refresh your drink, use the bathroom, I encourage you to do so now, and then we'll pick back up in a few minutes. Good evening. 
I'm honored to have been asked, invited to participate in preparing for tonight and to have been asked to do this presentation. I will be speaking prior to a video which will be running in a, full mom in a few moments. This evening we are taking the opportunity to celebrate and thank an individual who has had a direct and ongoing role in shaping NASIS into the vibrant and thriving organization it is today. Please note, our honoree is not retiring, regardless of what you heard the rumors to be. This meeting in Minneapolis was simply a good place and a good time for this well-deserved recognition to occur. Let's see if I can make this. So, how many NASIS meetings have you been at? I ask you to raise your hand and please lower it when I hit the threshold. So, for example, if you've been to three meetings and I'm counting in person and virtual and I say five, put your hand down and we'll see how quickly hands go away. And I am, I can't find my cursor. Junie, I can't find the cursor. Uh, you put your arms down, guys. <laughs> Okay, so arms up. How many of you have been here for five meetings or fewer? Arms down. 10 or fewer? Arms down. 20 or fewer? Arms down. Oh, I can still stay up. 25 or fewer? Arms down. 30 or fewer? Really? Okay, 31, 32, 33. 34, 35, 36. This is the only time I'm gonna razz her. I'll be nice the rest of the night. 37, okay, 38, I feel like an auctioneer. 39, oh, maybe. Please, a hand for our honoree, Susan Pesha. So the question is, were you at NASIS Zero? Susan was. Susan was an attendee at NASIS Zero, which was held in Milwaukee, hosted by the American Geographical Society Library Collection at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. This brought together presidents or executive directors of organizations in North America focused on cartography. Organizations such as the Association of American Geographers, they hadn't changed their name yet, Western Association of Map Libraries, and the Geography and Map Division, the Special Libraries Association. While the organizations invited may not have moved forward in new partnerships, the idea for NASIS came out of that meeting, that meeting that Susan has always referred to as NASIS Zero. <laughs> uh, you'll know, Susan, Susan, on the last slide, you will know who to blame for some of this. <laughs> Susan moved to Milwaukee from the greater New York City area in 1977 when the American Geographical Society donated its library collection to the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee Library. The space on the third floor of the Golden Meir Library was constructed specially for the AGS Library. Susan's position with the library was divided between reference services and cataloging. Oh, in the last photo, I should finish this. In the last photo, uh, Susan is inputting bibliographic data into a citation index, which had been published by the American Geographical Society Library, and that was titled Current Geographical Publications. That's, uh, that's, that's for all of you guys who used to do ink on paper research. This is pre-computer stuff. So, I give you Susan Peschel the mother of mappers. <laughs> or, <laughs> or we could say Susan Peschel, the auntie of cartographers, and she's the fun auntie. <laughs> Susan served as NASA's treasurer in the early 2000s. 
She was preceded by Sona Andres, who is not able to be here this evening, and followed by Gordon Kennedy. Oh, and I should warn you, those of you who are playing Geodrebe Jeopardy, you need to be taking notes. <laughs> Susan Asana worked hard to stabilize Nasus's finances, instituting some of the tracking that Susan still follows today as business manager. Susan officially became business manager in 2006 when Gordon stepped in as treasurer, but she had been serving in that role prior to filling the business manager position officially. Looking at documents that I could find in my own files from the mid-2000s, I suspect that prior to Susan there was not an official business manager. Sana and Susan often consulted with their uh, accountant, Mr. Merlot, while working on NASA's finances. In this photo, past presidents, one by one, presented Susan with bottles of Merlot at the 2011 annual meeting banquet in Madison. A good place to do this because she didn't need to figure out how to get all of those bottles onto an airplane. <laughs> when I served as treasurer, Susan's reports that I worked with to submit IRS tax forms and create reports for a NASIS membership were very detailed. That hasn't changed, as Mary Beth can attest to. This spreadsheet, which was about the 2015 Minneapolis conference, has 220 lines in it. It includes details about costs of individual desserts at the banquet. Please do not ask Susan this evening about how much your apple tart costs. Lanyards and, of course, the price of coffee per gallon. Susan's years of NASA's conference planning has given her the expertise to know what the indicators of relative conference expenses would be. Her favorite canary in the coal mine, and that's what she called it, is the cost for a gallon of coffee. The more expensive the coffee, the more expensive the conference. This intuition and practice eye are critical for each one of our conferences to be successful. She's laughing. While Susan's natural habitat may seem to be the registration desk, she enjoys to the opportunity to speak with members, well, actually not members, but with friends old and new, at the reception that opens the map gallery. So she does get out, guys. During the relative quiet while sessions are running, Susan has the chance for quiet individual conversations catching up and reconnecting after not seeing friends for a year or sometimes longer. And if Susan thinks you need it, she's always good for a hug, for a pep talk, to be a sounding board. Having worked with Susan at the registration desk for more than 20 years, I can certainly say that I am one of the many who has benefited from Susan's ready compassion. Now, most of us take off on Saturday. We do this, we heckle the folks who are playing Geo Dweeb, and we leave when we don't think about Saturday at all. Some do stay for a field trip or a workshop, but the Saturday events are often shepherded by Susan. If they are in the hotel, she makes sure that the rooms are unlocked, projectors are in place or available. She makes sure that field trip attendees find their group. Still, Susan has been on at least one field trip a bus trip to the Lake Tahoe area in 2009 when NASA's met in Sac Sacramento. But looking at this photo, you see her wave in the back on the right? I think Susan was still working on behalf of NASA during that excursion too. She never stops. NASA has become a family affair. Uh, daughter Allison has provided technical support and database and meal ticket design. We still use all the things that Allison designed. Susan and husband Bob have served as hosts for the spring board meeting went and held in Milwaukee for many years. The lunch in the middle of the day, long day long meeting would be brought in by Bob or Allison or perhaps son Kyle. Bob has picked up many members at the airport. There often is an evening meal event at the Peschels the night before the board meeting. And after the meeting is over, Susan and Bob would have made arrangements for the group to continue through at dinner time. We got back at Bob with this next one, Susan, okay? <laughs> Bob is an energetic supporter of NASIS as evidenced by the interesting temporary tattoo placement. 
Unfortunately, he's not able to be here this evening. Conflicting invitations. He's representing the Peschels at a red tie event elsewhere. Uh, Susan told me earlier this week that there are many things that she has missed because of this week being with us. So she has certainly sacrificed doing some things with her, her friends and family. Susan and Bob enjoy traveling, and Susan knows where you live. <laughs> that sounds a little creepy, but it really isn't. Uh, recently, they traveled to Europe and had an opportunity to bike with Hans von der Mar. So, in closing, this is what I have to say. Elected board members, appointed executive directors, cartographic perspective, and atlas of design editors come and go. There is but one constant in 40 years. Hey, Susan. Hi, Susan. Hey there, my birthday twin. Hi, Susan. Welcome back to my hometown. Uh, not necessarily to my backyard, but you're welcome over here anytime. Boy, I wish I was there to share a glass of wine with you and celebrate in person. But thanks to those who put this video together, we can offer a few words of appreciation and admiration for the 42 years of service that you've given to our beloved society. We could not have done it without you. The organizational meeting of what came to be called NASIS took place in Milwaukee in October of 1980 at the American Geographical Society Library and at a local hotel. It naturally appealed to AGS library staff members and Susan Peschel and I thus began our decades-long involvement with the Society. In her 42 years with NASIS, she served as business manager, associate executive director, board member, local arrangements coordinator, archivist, conference planning guru, and the all-around glue that held the organization together. In the long history of the organization, I can't think of anyone more deserving of recognition. I've known Susan for 24 years and I consider her a former colleague, but always a friend. I was NASA's treasurer from 1996 to 2000, and I only took on the role because I knew I would be working with Susan. Susan, words can barely express what you've done for NASIS and for me over the years, let alone what you mean to both. We spent a lot of time on the board together. I've, I've lost count of the amount of years, but you've always been such an amazing presence on the board. It's been an honor to serve with you. And you are really one of the people that makes NASIS what it is. You're one of the people that makes NASIS tick. She's a powerhouse. She's encyclopedic. She's got over 40 years of NASIS history. Um, that she can recite to you at the drop of a hat. It's just amazing. She could trademark her recipe for a society dedicated to creating the ultimate introvert comfort zone, if you ask me. But the others are all missing the secret ingredient of Susan Peschel herself. The details are what can make or break a design, and Susan's work on the details has been one of the most influential factors, I think and the success of what we've done here at NASIS. I admire your passion for this society and the commitment that you've had all of these years. Um, without your service to this organization, we would not be the NASIS that we are today. Given what Susan has contributed to this organization, it would not have been unfair if we'd given her this level of tribute at every conference for the past couple of decades. Did you know that she has magical abilities? She can actually predict the financial success of a conference based on the price of a gallon of coffee. She also has a spreadsheet where she has tracked half bagels that have been served over many, many years of, of NASIS conferences. I remember really wondering, like, did we need to, to think about this, this, this number of bagels during this break? what she's attending to and caring about there. Uh, and with all this attention to detail that she provides the society is the health and longevity of, of our group. 
and having her keep an eye on practically everything has been a big part of how Nasus has managed to be successful and stay financially afloat for decades. It's also remarkable how she's managed to do all this while still staying so patient with all of us. If I had to describe her with one word, I'd say generous. Generous. Generous, persistent, detail-oriented. But overall, I think kind. Reliable. It's tireless. It's influential. Tight ship. I'm a traveler. To me, Susan is a lighthouse. She guides, she protects, she keeps us afloat. And yes, frugal in a good way. I would use the word shepherd. Susan somehow keeps a group of people who would otherwise be heading in a hundred different directions together and leads us to beautiful places to have our conferences. Susan is ubiquitous. Any sort of nuts and bolts problem about uh, uh, NASA's or any of its various projects, uh, it comes down to talking to Susan. Uh, about how do you pay the bills? How do we set up an account? How do we budget for this? How do we make the arrangements for that? Susan's your, your, your point person for that stuff. Words associated with Susan is Merlot. Time for Mr. Merlot? I'd say formidable. She's like a pit bull behind a golden retriever's facade. She's very friendly and very pleasant, but if she has to, she will get her way. And that's okay, because her judgment and common sense are absolutely impeccable. What's one phrase that reminds me of Susan Peschel? Well, that would be Nasus is nicest. Many people remember me for the guy that was handing out drink tickets. But where do you think I got the drink tickets from? A typical phrase, too many plates are spinning in the air, but she always follows it up with, don't worry, we'll get to that. I'd say, don't worry about it. It's kind of like in Midwestern, forget about it. Susan's typical phrase, and related to Nasus, is of course, Nasus is nicest. She completely embodies the spirit of Nasus is nicest, welcoming every single new person at the registration desk, mentoring new board members, and sometimes wooing the hotel staff to get some extra free stuff. Susan is just plain nice. She's so welcoming. She lets everybody feel that they're part of this sort of insider club at Nasus. Working with Susan at the registration desk, I am always shamed. People walk up, I have no idea who they are. And those of you who I have stumbled over your names know who you are. But Susan, she hasn't even met people. And she welcomes them by name. It's an amazing welcome. Susan, I clearly remember that first time I met you at the registration desk in 1994 at my first NASIS in Ottawa. You were so helpful to a newbie. You conveyed an aura of authority mixed with kind heartedness and wisdom. You never lost that aura. You are NASIS's guardian angel. I've been everything from a student member um, who was part of probably the last time we'll ever visit Fontenac, uh, Missouri. I've been a regular member, I've been a board member, um, I've participated in so many different ways and, and absolutely none of that impacts how much Susan is willing to help me out as a member. Just her warmth and her welcoming spirit and just her friendliness made it so easy to feel a part of this group. Nasus is nicest because so many of us give so much of our time to make it a welcoming, supportive community. And no one exemplifies this better than Susan. You've given all of us years of conference memories um, to cherish. And no matter what, through all the cities, all the different venues, um, you've always done it with a smile and uh, made sure that none of us know what's happening in the background and you're always taking care of it to give us the best uh, conference year that we can possibly have. Thank you for always making sure that our conference is affordable and accessible to our members, making sure our exorbitantly expensive coffee is available to us. Another way that I know uh, that you have demonstrated the care that you have for the organization is that I know when people register don't register for the meeting and you expect them to be there, you chase them up and you see, are they okay? Um, and I know that those people appreciate you reaching out. She nudges us. Uh, she nudges the board, she nudges other projects people into, how do you make this work and work well? How do you make it? So it, it costs a reasonable amount, is nice for people and makes them happy.
that is a quiet and subtle value that is a large part why Nasus is what it is today. I am never going to be able to, to do what she has done over the years. It's just not possible. It's just behind the scenes, she does so much work and it's pretty intimidating and pretty awe-inspiring um, to be able to see on, from behind the scenes what Susan does on a daily basis for, for Nasus. It's just, it's phenomenal. She always seems to keep her cool. She always seems to be on an even keel. She's very polite, considerate, um, respectful of all people at all times. Most of my interactions with Susan have been emails. Uh, in fact, I looked back and I've had 1,156 email threads uh, with Susan. Not just emails, but whole threads. I've got many memories um, of, of our board meetings all over, all over the U.S. Um, I gotta say though, my, my favorite memory of you is going to be um, being able to join you on your cycling trip in the Netherlands a few months ago. Here's a, a memory I have of, of Susan. Uh, she was coming to pick me up at the Milwaukee airport. She had told me ahead of time, you know, meet me at such and such place in the airport. And I said, oh yeah, I, I know where that is. Well, apparently I didn't because I didn't go to the right place. And um, this was before I was technolo technologically fluent. I didn't have a cell phone, so she couldn't reach me. Um, I knew what kind of car she drove, but <laughs> that wasn't much help. So um, she was kind of <laughs> kind of irritated about all that. But anyways, uh, I, I do have a cell phone now, Susan, so hopefully that won't, won't happen in, <laughs> in the future. She has um, been part of my life for so long that, um, you know, I knew Susan before my girls were born. And um, she's always been supportive of balancing work, life, family, all of that, and helping me through uh, personal challenges, uh, inviting me to her living room, sitting with me, talking with me, offering encouragement. Uh, it's, it's really incredible. I couldn't wrap my head around what I could possibly say, how I could possibly put into words everything that you mean to me, the mentor you've been to me, um, the support system you've been for me. Uh, I just, uh, there's no way I can do it justice. Susan, what I'd like to say to you is just how much I've loved working with you over the years. Nasus and you being an important part of it have just been so important to my career as a cartographer. So very grateful, Susan, that, that you have been at the helm of uh, Nasus and has have been there for so long. So I, I, I thank you for that. Your friendship has been invaluable to me and I cannot fully express how much you mean to me and how much you mean to your nicest friends and colleagues. Thank you so much for all that you've done for us. Thank you so much for being that kind and collegial voice and ear on the other end of the phone. I love seeing you every October. Thanks for sharing Bob with us, especially at board meetings and post-conference adventures we got to enjoy. And Bob, thanks for sharing Susan with us. We know that the many hours and many years that she dedicated to NASIS wasn't easy, but your support is greatly appreciated too. Thank you for being a friend, mentor, uh, someone I can always walk up to to get a hug from and um, for being the hostess with the mostess. She genuinely cares about the details all the way down to the lasagna in her dining room at home when she hosts us for dinner before the annual board meeting in Milwaukee. I'm greatly going to miss her when she starts to step back from her nasus role. Um, I'm not going to let her go too far, at least not for a while. Your hard work, humor, and humility have demonstrated to me and so many other nasites that true leadership is fashioned with commitment, caring, and camaraderie. I've known you now for over 20 years, and like a great Pino, you get better with every year. I have one request to make of you, and that is please attend future meetings, and I expect to see you not chained to the registration desk, but actually attending uh, sessions, listening to all the wonderful papers that are, that are given. And in fact, I'm gonna be looking out in the audience for your eager face whenever I'm giving a presentation, so make sure you're there. You always make me laugh with your witty comments. You are someone we can all count on, you are smart, funny, and dedicated. And we're all so fortunate for all the work that you've done for this organization. I only wish that Mr. Merlot were here to join me in saying, Thank you, Susan. 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 
Thank, Thank you, Susan. Susan. Before we close tonight, I ask for those of you in attendance and those participating virtually to join me in raising a glass to Susan Peschel. Susan, we love you. Here's and cheers to you. You're irreplaceable. So thank you, Susan, for all you've done for Nasus. For all of the love and care that you have given so many of us over so many years, thank you, Susan. Thanks for everything you've done. You rock and you have been a rock. I'll be seeing you around. We love you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Best of luck. Bye-bye. Boy, that was a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> All right. So I want to actually say thank you to one additional person this evening, and it's tied to a gift. And that is all of you who have uh, the print program, the cover illustration. Uh, this was done by our own Dylan Moriarty, and it is absolutely lovely. lovely. I, um, I emailed him uh, months ago with a goofy idea, and I'm absolutely delighted at the resultant illustration of uh, Vice President Brooke Marston and I shaking hands. So uh, thank you so much. I, it just tickles me. And then also, because Dylan is such a loving and supportive NASIS member, he has also illustrated <laughs> Susan Peschel. It's a it's a little hard to see for those in the back, so do come up, but this just captures her lovely and generous spirit and everything that we all described in the video. This is, it's just a delight. Dylan, thank you so much. And we have or we should have some raffle winners but looking at the time we're getting kind of close to uh geodweeb jeopardy so do we want to forego some raffle winners right now or do you guys want some prizes yes. <laughs> all right so i believe pat who has the raffles pat. all right there he is great and do you also have so Pat is carrying the little basket full of your names, and we have a variety of books. We have some shirts, and importantly, for those of you who are obsessively, all right, there we go. No. Um, what else do we have? I honestly cannot remember off the top of my head. Is that a photo of Susan off the raffle? Okay. All right. Go for it. There we go. All right. Uh, the fix is in. Elaine Guadero, will you please come up for your prize? <laughs> Oh, okay. 
Uh, Elaine, the prizes are in the back, so you can come up here and... <laughs> Tracy Tain. Okay. And we've got, um, let's see, Aaron Greb. And Risper Niero. Risper Niero. All right. And then we have one final speaker for the evening, and that is Vice President Brooke Marston. There we go. Oops. I'd like to steal your attention for a moment. Sorry, Daniel Huffman, I do like puns. I get the exciting job of revealing the location of next year's NASIS. Show of hands, who loves Wordle? Me, definitely. Then I think you'll love our NASIS doll. You guys ready? <laughs> Portland, anybody? Maybe? Mm. Lexington, Kentucky? <laughs> Salt Lake City? No, not next year. Atlanta? Nope. CIN? Steel City! <laughs> Pittsburgh! Thank you all for coming this year to Minneapolis, and we're going to see you next year, 2023, in Pittsburgh. Thank you. And that's it. We're done. We're ready for Geo Dewey Jeopardy. So we'll see you across the hall.